channel, The Shaded Baker. Today's video is a super simple, easy way to make French press coffee. Now, if you have never tried French press coffee, don't be scared of it. It does look a little industrial-like and sort of scary, but I promise you it's so easy to make, very simple. You don't need a lot of equipment to make it, and I promise you, once you go French press, you'll never go back. Anyone who knows me knows that I have a mild obsession with the Gilmore Girls. It's just one of my favorite shows. I love to watch it, drinking coffee. I feel like I'm a part of the show. So a lot of the times I see them, obviously at Luke's Diner, drinking Luke's coffee. This is a coffee morning. Every morning for you is a coffee morning. This is a jumbo coffee morning. I need coffee and an IV. But a lot of the times at home, they're making French press. So this could also be a way to even feel a little more Gilmore Girl like. At the foot, I need caffeine. Whatever form you've got, I haven't had any all day. I'll drink it, shoot it, eat it, snort it, whatever form it's in, gimme. So if you've ever found yourself wanting to try French press coffee or a little intimidated by it, stay tuned and watch my video to know how I got this lovely, nice cup of coffee. I'm a coffee addict. Coffee, coffee, coffee. I love coffee so much. I have it every single day, multiple times a day, on days where I just need a little more kick. But normally I always use a coffee maker, a little bitty coffee maker over there, my little single cup coffee. And I use coffee beans that I store in this container. And I do have a grinder. So I take the beans, I grind them up, and then I put them in the coffee maker for the day. But the better way to make coffee when you have a lot of time and you just want to indulge yourself a little is to actually French press your coffee. The items that you're going to need to make French press coffee is obviously your coffee. I use coffee beans. I get a big bag of Starbucks house blend beans at Sam's, have them in the freezer, and then I put them in here when I know I'm going to get ready to use them. And it has a little scoop in there that's really easily accessible. Obviously, you're gonna need a French press. This one was a gift, but they do sell these pretty much at every grocery store, and you can also order them off Amazon or have really decorative ones that you can get off Etsy. There's a ton of them out there, but this one has been tried and true for me ever since I've gotten it. And next is probably one of the most important purchases of my life. This changed the coffee game for me. Going from regular pre-ground coffee to actual coffee beans and grinding them myself changed the game for me. It made coffee so much better. It made it taste better. It also made the experience of making my own coffee feel a little more fancy other than just pouring grounds in a coffee maker and going ahead and pressing the on button. Now you don't have to use a tea kettle to make your boiled water for your French press because you are going to need boiling water or almost boiling water for it. You could definitely put a microwave safe container in the microwave to boil your water. Do it on the stove, but I have this tea kettle. I love drinking coffee with this and I love making tea out of this. So this is a very cute little tea kettle I also got as a gift. Very simple to use, you pour your amount of water in it, you put it on the stove, and then it whistles for you when it's ready. So these are the items in my arsenal to perfect my French press coffee. And now let's get into actually making the French press coffee. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to prepare our water for boiling. This is going to be sitting on the stove on high. Now the important part of the actual water that you're pouring into the French press is you don't want it to be boiling hot. You want it to be just on the tip of boiling. Just the tip. And the way to do that is if you have a tea kettle, you can put the tea kettle on high on the stove and right when you start hearing the first itty bitty ounces of the whistling coming out, that's when you're gonna take it off and you know your water's ready. I'm going to go ahead and put the tea kettle on the stove, put it on high while we do our other ingredients involving our coffee. So we're gonna get that started right now. Okay, so I have my coffee grinder. It's a Hamilton Beach one. Love it, does the job great, cleans easily. Highly recommend it. Now I'm going to get my coffee beans ready. Now this is a little scoop. This is seven grams or 0.25 ounces of coffee. When I grind coffee, I'm going to use two scoops of these. So it's going to depend on how strong you want your coffee. That is totally up to you. That's totally subjective. Okay. 
Oh, it smells like heaven. It smells so good. I could just live in there. We're done with our coffee beans and now we're gonna go ahead and grind. Now this is a very powerful coffee grinder. It will grind these beans into pretty much sawdust consistency. And you don't want that for French press. That's more for if you're using it for your regular coffee maker, it's easier for the grounds to come through. But for your French press, we're gonna stick with a little bit larger chunks. I'm gonna give it a couple pulses and checking on it. And I'll show you what it looks like for when we need it for the French press. When you're doing a French press, there are still some chunks in there, but it's not as, I'm sorry I'm using the word chunky. I know that probably freaks a lot of people out and it actually does me, so I'm not sure why I'm saying it, but let's go with more coarse grounds than the very fine that you're gonna need for a regular coffee maker. So that's what we're working with for our coffee grounds for the French press. So I'm gonna remove these from the grinder. Very simple, all you do is pour it out. I'm gonna pour it straight into our French press container. And now that our coffee grinder has done its job, I'm going to unplug it and then I'm going to pour them all in here. Now, with your fridge press, it does have a strainer in it. So when you're pouring your coffee grounds into it, you're gonna remove the top and the plunger. It's gonna sit right at the very bottom. So I'm just gonna take this and pour it out. Now our coffee grounds are all in the bottom of the French press container. So the next step, once our tea kettle is about to boil, which it's ready. It's about to whistle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off of the heat. Okay, it's sitting right there because I wanna explain what needs to happen right now before we actually use the plunger. So coffee grounds are in the bottom. The next step we're gonna do is we're going to pour the water that's almost boiling into it. Now we're gonna let it sit for about two to three minutes because we want the natural aroma of the coffee to come out and that is easily done when you let it breathe. We want to let it breathe like fine wine. All right, I have my tea kettle here. It is very hot, almost boiling water. I'm going to pour it over our coffee grounds in the French press. Now the way to do this to where you really get that mixture of coffee is we're gonna pour it slightly above. And be very careful because this is going to be very hot water. We're going to pour the very hot water about maybe five, six inches above the container because what that is going to do is the water's gonna go down in there and it's gonna do a little swirl of the actual coffee grounds. And that's just going to release those very aromatic smells from it and make the coffee really, really good for when we let it breathe. So here we go, be very careful. Okay. Now the amount of water you put in depends on the strength of your coffee also and not necessarily the amount of coffee beans. So that's two things you wanna consider, the amount of coffee beans and the amount of water. Okay, this is the amount that I usually do when I make a French press. This is going to get about two cups of coffee. So keep that in mind. Also the amount of water will be how much coffee you're going to get. Okay, so while we let this breathe, we're gonna give it about two to three minutes. We're going to talk about the strength of the coffee. Now, like I said, I use two scoops of coffee beans. I grind it, put it in the bottom, and then I fill it up to the top metal mark. Total preference. Now, the amount of water you pour in this will also lead to the amount of volume you get. So I get about two cups of coffee pouring it this way with this amount of water, but it also gives me the strength that I'm looking for. So it's something to play around with versus the strength of your actual coffee beans versus how many scoops you put in versus how many water. So this is the way I do it. This is the way I like my coffee. So if you do try this out, if it's too strong for you or it's too weak, tinker with any of these amounts until you find your perfect balance of coffee. It's been about two to three minutes while we are letting our coffee grounds breathe in the water, releasing those beautiful aromatic smells, which smells divine. The next part is to plunge it. This is just a simple plunger that all French presses should have, and it's very simple to use. We're gonna set that on top. Final step, we're going to put our hand on top of the plunger. Don't just shove it down, be very gentle, it's very sensitive. We want to very easily push it down and the easiest way to do this without being too aggressive. A little to the left. Is you're going to put your hand on top, put the other and just let the weight of your hand kind of push it down. And you'll feel resistance, but just let your hand sit on top and I promise you everything will be okay. And just plunge it until it gets all the way to the bottom. Now what that's doing is it's pushing and keeping the coffee grounds at the bottom 
and is pushing up those really fine pieces and all the lovely stuff that's coming out of coffee into the part that's filled with water now. There you go. I recommend letting this sit for at least five minutes. Now, the longer you let the coffee sit in the fresh press, the more aromatic it will be, the stronger it will be, the better tasting it would be, more so than anything that you let sit and let the naturalness of the coffee come together and let it seep into the water and really get that robust flavor. Five minutes later. It has been five minutes and I'm ready for a good cup of coffee. A damn fine cup of coffee. I'm going to slowly pour this into my coffee cup. The difference between coffee and a coffee maker versus a French press to me is hands down bar none. If you really have the time to be able to grind your beans, go the full length like we did today, I highly recommend it. Even if you can't do it on the daily, it's something to do to make yourself feel good, a part of self-care, maybe for a beautiful Saturday morning or maybe even for Sunday brunch. So that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video of how to make good French press coffee and maybe be even closer to being an actual Gilmore girl. I'm out of here, guys. I'm going to go sit back and enjoy my nice cup of coffee, and I will see you in my next video.